Today is a big video. With me is the brand new framework laptop with AMD. But what's so special about it is that it has the new Zen 4U series processor inside. And what you're about to witness is this new AMD processor completely mopping the floor with Intel. In fact, not only does it destroy Intel's offering, but it is extremely competitive with Apple in terms of overall power efficiency, yet it costs a lot less. And I for one didn't think that was possible. So grab some popcorn and enjoy the show. Now, for those who haven't heard of Framework before, they are a new laptop manufacturer that burst onto the scene two years ago. What makes them so unique is that their laptops are fully upgradable. No more stressing out during the buying process. Should I spend extra money for a high spec laptop that I may not actually need? Or should I spend less and run the risk of not having a configuration that I need in the future? Plus an upgradable laptop is better for the environment and we love that. Now, as I mentioned, this laptop is the first one that we've tested with AMD's new Zen 4U series processor, the 7840U. Since AMD and Intel have done an absolutely horrific job naming their products, let me explain why this one is so special. The last letter of the name refers to the kind of laptop that the processor was designed for. U series is really for smaller portable laptops. HS and HX is for larger, more powerful ones like those designed for gaming. Then the third number in the processor's name refers to its architecture. A 4 means the processor is from the current Zen 4 generation. Many AMD laptop processors sold today are actually from the prior generation, just misleadingly named so you think you are buying a current one. So what we have here today is the first of AMD's real current generation processors designed for lightweight laptops. I'll be comparing it with an almost identical framework laptop with Intel's 1360p processor. Intel, unlike AMD, actually has two processor series designed for portable laptops, the U and P series. U for lower performance ones and P for lightweight laptops that offer high performance. AMD's U series actually covers both these use cases. Now, as I said, these two framework laptops are almost identical. There are two differences to call out though. My AMD model has the matte non-reflective screen and my Intel laptop has the glossy one. If you're choosing between the two, I'd recommend the matte. Even though the panels themselves are the same, or at least that's what framework tells me, the matte one is ever so slightly brighter, likely because light just doesn't have to be pushed through an additional glossy layer. Plus, I find the colors on the matte model are more pleasing. The glossy one has a slight red tint and the matte one looks a little more on the cooler blue side, which I like. The second difference is that the AMD laptop has faster DDR5 memory and the Intel laptop has DDR4. You can of course get Intel laptops with DDR5 memory, but this one just happens to use the older DDR4. I'll cover the impact of that in a sec. We tested all three performance modes for each laptop, which you can change in Windows. And we will be comparing these two framework laptops with the MacBook Pro 14 12 core and the original 11th gen Intel framework laptop so you can see how far they've come. Technically, we should have compared these frameworks to the 10 core M2 Pro MacBook, as that is more comparable pricing wise. But I didn't happen to have one of those in the studio, so please bear that in mind when you see the results. Let's start our analysis with Geekbench 6, which tests a variety of common performance tasks. From the results, it looks as though this new Ryzen processor is faster than the Intel one, particularly evident when running the processor in its lower power modes like the default balance mode and the best power efficiency mode. But as I said, the AMD laptop has DDR5 memory and Geekbench does benefit from faster memory. So this will affect the results in favor of the AMD framework laptop. So let's switch to Cinebench, which is a less memory dependent benchmark that tests how the processor performs when it is maxed out. Here you can really see that in multi-core, the AMD processor is much more powerful than the Intel one. Although Intel still holds the lead in single core. When it comes to sustained performance over time, we ran both laptops on a 10 minute torture test. In the higher performance modes, the AMD laptop is able to keep the processor running at full performance. This is similar to a MacBook Pro, and it indicates that the cooling solution can keep the processor cool. Great result here. The Intel laptop though has to drop its performance a little. Let's now double click into the power draw to see what's really going on. The AMD's max power draw was consistently less than Intel's, but its average power draw over our 10 minute torture test was actually around 3 watts higher. However, the most important thing is really efficiency. When we graph performance per watt, which factors in the higher performance of the AMD processor, you can see that it is significantly more efficient than Intel, somewhere in the region 22 to 24% better. In fact, under full load, it's the same as the MacBook's M2 Pro chip. And in a laptop, the efficiency of the processor is the most important thing. A more efficient processor means less heat and fan noise and longer battery life. 
That's because a more efficient processor draws less power to complete the same tasks, and therefore the laptop doesn't have to dissipate as much heat. You can see this immediately playing out when you look at the max temperatures that the CPU runs at during these tests. The AMD processor ran substantially cooler than Intel and Apple. Now when it comes to the heat you feel when the laptop is under full load, the keyboard deck and underside felt a tiny bit cooler on the AMD framework, at least on the performance and balance modes, which are the modes you're likely to use for this use case. That being said, the MacBook Pro 14 was by far the coolest feeling laptop for high performance tasks. It is a slightly larger and heavier laptop though, so the heat likely has more space to dissipate. Fan noise when the laptop is under full load was a similar story. The AMD laptop was a tiny bit quieter than the Intel one, but again, neither laptop was as quiet as the Mac. But that's when running the laptop under full performance. What about in real world use? I have great news here. The AMD laptop was noticeably quieter than the Intel one, significantly so. The AMD Framework laptop was dead silent for most casual use. It's only once you start doing something intensive like installing a program or compiling code that you'll hear the fan spin up. And when you do, it is noticeable, but it isn't high pitched, and it quickly quietens back down once the task is done, so it isn't overly disturbing like the Intel one is. Fan noise was my number one issue with the Framework laptop to date. I'm referring to the Intel models, of course. It was the reason I couldn't recommend this laptop as one of my top picks. I'm delighted to report that with this new AMD version, this has been solved. When it comes to the heat you feel under real world use, the AMD laptop does get a little bit warm, but it's nothing overly concerning. The Mac by the way still wins here as it's almost cold to the touch in this use case, which is really nice. When it comes to graphics performance, the AMD laptop's integrated Radeon 780M GPU smashed Intel's paltry integrated graphics. You should have no problems having a decent gaming experience for non-taxing games like League of Legends or that sort of thing. That being said, neither comes close to the MacBook Pro 14's extremely powerful integrated graphics. Let's take a look at battery performance. Firstly, when on battery, the AMD Framework laptop like the Mac is able to maintain its full CPU performance. The performance of the Intel version of the laptop does drop a little. To test longevity, we ran Cinebench on a loop for 30 minutes while on battery. The AMD laptop had more battery remaining at the end of the test than the Intel and even the MacBook Pro. What's even more impressive is that the Framework laptops have a smaller battery, a 61 watt hour one, whereas the MacBook Pro 14 has a 70 watt hour one. To provide a more realistic battery test, we dimmed all screens to 200 nits and then played a Netflix video on repeat over Wi-Fi for four hours. This was on best battery life settings. Here you can see a monstrous improvement of the AMD laptop over the Intel one. In this case, the Mac did win, but when you once again consider its larger battery and much heavier weight, it really didn't win by that much. A couple of closing thoughts before I wrap. Framework as a fully upgradable laptop offers interchangeable ports which allows you to swap them out. Want an Ethernet port? No probs, you can swap a port out for it. Want an HDMI one? Same deal. But special note, on the Intel version, if you use USB-C ports, all will support Thunderbolt. If you get the AMD version, the back two ports support USB 4.0, which has the same speed as Thunderbolt. The front two though will be slower USB speeds. And on that note, let's wrap. No one should buy the Intel version of this laptop, even for programs that traditionally prefer Intel over AMD such as Premiere Pro. Even that performed better on the AMD version. Speaking completely transparently, I am shocked by how well this new AMD Zen 4U processor has done. I'm constantly reading comments that people have posted on Intel laptops that we've reviewed claiming that if the laptop was an AMD one, all issues around heat you feel, loud fan noise and short battery life would be gone. I see these comments and I just think to myself that these people are just hardcore fans of AMD that is. Because to date, we haven't seen differences like that between the higher powered AMD and Intel processors from the current generation that we've tested, say in the Asus G14. But for this lower wattage U series processor, they are right. AMD has a huge lead over Intel and is extremely competitive with Apple. So with this all said, I am blown away by this new framework laptop with AMD. It is one of my absolute favorites right now, and I've already switched to using it as my personal Windows laptop. 
It's fully upgradable, it's got excellent CPU performance, solid battery life, and it's dead quiet for casual tasks. It's also very lightweight, it's got a comfortable keyboard and a nice crisp bright screen. Its main downsides are that it looks dated and feels a little cheap. Hopefully the new interchangeable coloured bezels should help a little bit here. It also doesn't offer high performance graphics, a fast refresh rate screen, and its speakers and trackpad aren't the best. In terms of ideal buyers for this laptop, the most obvious is software developers, as they like a strong CPU performance, the ability to upgrade things like memory, a good keyboard, and a crisp display. Plus, it has strong Linux support. It immediately jumps to my number one recommendation for software developers looking for a small portable laptop. But given how insanely good this laptop is, I'd also strongly recommend those looking for a laptop for school or home or office use really consider this one. Well, what did you think of this new framework laptop with AMD's brand new Zen 4 U series processor? Let me know with a comment down below. Make sure you smash the like button and get subscribed. It's something you can easily do to help grow the channel. And a larger channel means we get to create more videos for you. Plus, it makes my mother very proud. Till next time, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.